I've been suffering for all these years. I had no idea what was wrong with me. I didn't know I had post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's why I say my country declared war on me. I served in the United States Army from October 1977 till October of 1981. I went to Hanau, Germany. I worked at Flieger Horse Tank Farm with jet fuel of 76 whiskey, which is petroleum supply. And I had a stellar career in Germany, many, many awards. But I had spent so much time in Germany with my father being in the military that I wanted to stay stateside sometime. So I re-enlisted for Fort Lewis, Washington. I was assigned to 9th Signal Battalion. From there, it just went downhill. While I was at Fort Lewis, I met this lady at Eastlake Club. It was a club in Seattle, so she became my girlfriend. For some reason, my company commander, he was a I went to him and I told him I was gay. I wanted to get out of the military. So what he had me do was bring in females. He needed proof, in other words. Gave him statements, bought it my girlfriend. He would not release me out of the military. We had a movement to Yakima, which is when the whole battalion moves to another place. I took all my TA-50, my military gear, and I went and turned it in, like I'm gonna go to the movement. And I got really sick. So I didn't go. I went to Seattle, Washington, and I was diagnosed with scarlet fever. Now this had been going on for about six months. Hands peeling, skin just tore up on my neck everywhere. I got treated for my scarlet fever. I went back to my unit, 23 days AWOL. My company commander decided they were gonna court-martial me for missing a movement to Yakima, Washington. I was found guilty of missing a movement. But before I went to trial, I was placed in a holding detachment for three months. And then after my court martial, I went to the jail, the stockade. They flew my father in, who was still in the military from Fort Benning, Georgia, to my court martial. When they found me guilty, my father came back and visited me in my cell. My father was Sergeant First Class in the military. He has to come to my trial and see his daughter locked up for really basically no reason. I was the only woman in there. I was made to stand at parade rest most of the day. I had to do push-ups when they told me. They had a movie night, but since I was the only female there, I couldn't go. I was told I could not talk to anyone except for staff. So it was like I was in total isolation. I was vegetarian before I went in to the oh. stockade. They were gonna force feed me because I didn't want to eat meat. My girlfriend was organizing a protest with some of her friends, so one day, you're free to go. You all process out the military into your unit. They sent me back to the same unit that I just came from, and I had to out process then. I had an honorable discharge from my first enlistment. The second one, they wanted to give me a dishonorable. I actually got an undesirable, and then six months later, it was upgraded to general under honorable conditions. But during all of that, I've been suffering for all these years. I had no idea what was wrong with me. I didn't know I had post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's why I say my country declared war on me. I mean, when you're 23, 24 years old, you don't know how to fight back like that against the government. I had no idea I had certain rights. Not everything, a lot of things they were doing to me was wrong. So I come to this PTSD retreat because I was diagnosed in 2007. I got out in 1981. I ran for years. My children been homeless with me many, many, many times. Sometimes I got so bad I had to leave my children with my family members because I couldn't even cope. Suicide, it's very suicidal. But the one thing that kept me from killing myself, I was on probation for four years. And my probation officer, I came into his office one day drunk and I told him I'm about to commit suicide. He said, I'm gonna transfer you home to Columbus. You go back to your parents' house. I was living in Atlanta. And he said, how selfish could you be with two children to commit suicide? And since then, I mean, you know, the thoughts come back now and then, but I can't do that to my sons. So then uh, I went to the VA and I started getting some treatment. I was just crying and crying. And from then on, I was diagnosed and I started going to my classes. That was kind of a turning point when 
you knew what you were dealing with. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Now I could put a, a name on why I was acting like I was. But it doesn't take from the fact that all these years I missed out on my children's life a lot. They missed out a lot on me. I sent my parents through all that. I can just imagine how my father felt when he flew out from SeaTac after seeing me. I can just imagine. So I'm working through everything, but it's very, very painful, and I've only been able to talk about it in the last few years. Yeah. Very painful. Well, you've given us some powerful moments in this. If there's anything else you want to add to, uh, that you want to talk about. I'm going to get my DDT-14, and it says, service member engaged in immoral acts. It's on there to this day. Nowadays, you can be transgender, you can be gay in the military, you can have that lifestyle. But why does my DD-14 have to have immoral acts? Immoral acts sounds like I am really some kind of deviant person, and I'm not. And that's not right, and I want that corrected. And I want everybody that feels like there's no one there for them, or have a similar situation, there is help for you. There's definitely help, but you have to recognize it and don't run from it because it will destroy your life, and it may even destroy your family, your children's life. Please get help. Please. This oh, doesn't no. quite do you justice. It is what it is, so you're welcome to it. Thanks for Oh, thank you. Thank you.